Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for Our Health Lunchtime Live. My name is Amber Vandy Kirk, um, and I am joined today by Dr. Dan Goldman of our, our Health Cherry Hill practice. Good afternoon, Dan. How are you today? Good day. I'm, I'm doing well. And yourself? Great. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, before Dr. Goldman and I get started talking about diabetes today, I first just wanted to take a second to tell you just a little bit about our health and who we are and what we're all about. So our health offers access to a personal doctor on demand. And if you have New Jersey state or school health benefits, you have access to an our health dedicated doctor at no additional cost and with no co-pays. Um, this is a great benefit. It's an exclusive benefit. So we'd encourage you to take advantage of it. You can see our website and our phone number scrolling at the bottom of the screen. So if you'd like more information or if you have questions, you can visit our website or, or call that 800 number. Again, just one more reminder before we get started. If you have questions, Dr. Goldman and I would love to answer them. So please um, add your questions into the comment section of the live video and we will we will answer them. So with, with that, I'd love to get started. So Dr. Goldman, diabetes is such an important topic. It's something I know you're really passionate about that you work with your patients you know, a lot on. It's something that impacts so many people. So tell me a little bit about it. So what, you know, what is diabetes and, you know, how could someone, how could someone get it? Well, diabetes is a Dr. Goldman, I think you faded out there for just one second. So if you could just take that from the top. We're having, I think we're having some technical difficulties there. So we're going to keep trying. So, so bear with us. I'm sorry that sometimes bandwidth issues. Um, but really, you know, I think you were saying it's an epidemic and we've really got to work on, on controlling that. So what can we do to control it? Well, the main things are um, watching your diet as far as your calorie intake, uh, staying physically active, knowing about your family history and periodically getting screened through your uh, primary care doctor uh, with a fasting blood sugar and if appropriate, even an A1C if you're at high risk with family history or obesity. Uh, hypertension has also been associated with diabetes as well. So periodically getting uh, health checks through your doctor are uh, the best ways to catch these things early. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple types of diabetes, right? What, what are they and what's the difference? Well, primarily there are two. There's type 1 diabetes, which is called insulin dependent. That's typically in the younger onset, usually before your early 20s. And that's where your pancreas... Um, basically stops producing insulin. Usually it's an autoimmune reaction where your body attacks the pancreatic cells that produce insulin and your body is no longer able to make insulin. So blood sugars go high and the insulin can't keep up with it uh, to the point where some people go into what's called diabetic ketoacidosis. Uh, some warning signs of that are being very thirsty, urinating frequently, blurry vision, uh, being hungry a lot, weight loss. Uh, the second type is type 2 diabetes, which is typically an older onset, although kids are now being diagnosed with it, it's typically associated with uh, obesity, um, and it's typically referred to as insulin resistance. In this case, the pancreas is able to produce uh, a lot of insulin, but the cells in the body begin, become resistant. There's so much insulin floating around that your body is actually downregulating the insulin receptors and is essentially ignoring uh, insulin uh, in your body, and your sugars are still running high because of that. Mm -hmm. And what about, you know, you had, when we were sort of talking about this beforehand, you were saying that we could, you can reverse diabetes though. Is that, is that true for both cases? And if so, you know, how do you, how do you do that? Well, it's a, a little bit of a misconception that you can actually reverse diabetes. Okay. Uh, you can control diabetes, mm -hmm. whether it's through diet and exercise or medication or insulin. Uh, type one diabetes um, at this stage in the game is not reversible or, or uh, correctable at all without insulin. Uh, although they're working on therapies to try and replace the pancreas with the uh, transplant or um, with stem cells. Uh, type 2 diabetes, um, which is the one that's mostly associated with being obese, uh, that can certainly be improved as far as controlling it through diet and exercise, uh, taking medications appropriately, following up with your doctor regularly. 
Uh, but something I want to uh, clarify is that neither form of diabetes is reversible. It can, okay. be, can be controlled. There are some uh, bariatric surgeons who have told uh, patients that I've run into that they can cure their diabetes with surgery. That's not true. It can improve control of diabetes, but it can never reverse it. Because remember, in the vast majority of cases, diabetes is at least in part a genetic problem and mm. you can't cut out your genes. Yeah. So it's really about controlling it. So how do we go about control it? Is it really diet, exercise, many times medication? Correct. So the, the basis of any chronic illness is basically controlling with diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, all patients is that, you know, cake in one hand and pills in the other doesn't really work out. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can always they don't cancel each other out the way you want to. Exactly. You can always overcome the effect of a good medication routine with a bad diet. and controlling your weight, following an ADA uh, diet, and then taking the medications as prescribed by your physician, uh, and also following up periodically with your doctor for routine checks for your diabetes. You were fading out there a little bit, but I think you were talking about the importance of really having close communication with your physician to manage your diabetes. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, you really need to follow up periodically with your doctor if you're going to keep your diabetes under good control. Mm -hmm. Um, we do have a question that came in, so I'm going to interject with that before I before I move on. But does having diabetes mean that I'm at higher risk for other medical problems? Yes. Um, actually, diabetes uh, affects your entire body. Mm -hmm. So um, it increases, actually, I'll go through some of the chronic complications of diabetes. It increases risk for blindness through something called diabetic retinopathy. It increases risk for cardiovascular disease like heart attacks. Uh, peripheral vascular disease, which can lead to amputations, um, kidney disease and kidney failure leading to dialysis, and nerve damage, what's called neuropathy, where people uh, either lose sensation in their extremities or they can actually have painful, what's called neuropathy as well. So diabetes really does affect the entire body in, in those ways. Yeah. And those, you know, we were talking about for the, the topic of this, the, the four most common complications from diabetes, would you say those are those, are those complications? Right. And it's easy to remember because you can just basically go from top to bottom. So when I explain those to my patients when they come in for a new diagnosis, again, it's you know, starting at the top with, with blindness, heart disease, and cardiovascular disease. So amputations as you go lower, mm -hmm. uh, kidney failure, um, and then neuropathy, which occurs in what we call stocking glove distribution. So basically, it's the hands and feet. This is further up. So those sound like some pretty scary complications. That doesn't sound like something to, you know, to mess around with. So how do we, you know, how do we prevent that? You know, what can we do, to, you know, if we get a diagnosis of diabetes, you know, or are living with diabetes, you know, how can we really manage and prevent those complications from ever taking place? Well, managing it is, is the key to preventing those complications. And by managing diabetes and getting tight control over it, you reduce the risk of those complications chronic complications, mm -hmm. and you either won't develop them or will develop them much later than if your diabetes wasn't well controlled. Mm -hmm. So certainly um, diet and exercise, taking medications, following up with your doctor uh, for uh, frequent uh, diabetes checks as directed, uh, and that will help to reduce or uh, limit the complications from developing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know your body really gives you different warning signs if your blood sugar is too high, too low, you know, what are, you know, and that's, you know, really the key to diabetes is, is managing that your blood sugar. So what are those warning signs when you're either too high or too low? Well, blood sugars that run too high, typically you'll get symptoms like being thirsty a lot, um, uh, having blurry vision, urinating frequently. Um, you might even uh, have an increase in your appetite. Uh, some people even lose weight because they're, they're urinating out a lot of the sugar they're taking in. Uh, symptoms of low blood sugar um, are typically things like um, dizziness, headaches, sweating, um, and even uh, in more extreme situations, passing out. Mm -hmm. And what about, you know, so let's start with, with being too high. So if my blood sugars are too high and I'm experiencing some of those, those symptoms, what, what can I do? Uh, if your blood sugar, sugars are running high or having those types of symptoms, uh, you may have a glucometer at home to check your blood sugar to mm -hmm. see what 
what that's uh, due to. You can see what your sugars are. It may or may not be related to your diabetes, but certainly if you have diabetes and you're having those symptoms, that should be checked. Uh, obviously, watching your diet closer as far as your sugar intake, uh, making sure you're not skipping any of your medications and staying physically active. And then also, Uh, you faded out there again on your last point with with also. So let's let's try that one again. I just want to make sure everyone's getting that important that important information. Well, making sure you're following your diet and watching that closely. Uh, making sure you're not skipping your medications. Mm -hmm. and, you know, with your doctor closely when if you develop those types of symptoms. As far as if your blood sugar is running too low, um, a lot of times that happens on when people who are on insulin or some uh, similar type of medication. Certainly checking your sugars. Uh, mm -hmm. If your sugars are running low, then getting a quick uh, jolt of, of sugar with something like orange juice or even a candy bar in, in more extreme situations as a temporary um, uh, basis to try and make sure the sugars go up. But you want to make sure that, that your sugars are dropping or you feel the dropping um, when you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good information. Um, you know, oftentimes people think that they need a specialist to manage their diabetes. Um, you know, they think, let me let me go and work with an endocrinologist on this, right? Is that is that true, or you know, what can a primary care doctor do to to manage diabetes? Well, most primary care doctors can handle most cases of diabetes. Um, there are fairly um, straightforward algorithms, and even just you know, experience on how to to treat diabetes in general. So you don't need to see a specialist necessarily for diabetes. What I uh, generally recommend is that people who are poorly controlled as far as their diabetes long term, or if they're on multiple doses of insulin, they may benefit from seeing a specialist or an endocrinologist, but the vast majority of diabetes can be handled effectively through a primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. And I just want to interject there to remind everyone who's joining us today, if you have questions for Dr. Goldman um, or myself, more for Dr. Goldman, he's the expert here, be happy to answer them. So please feel free to post that in, in the comments. Um, so, you know, we talked about sort of, the, you know, the, that primary care doctors can manage, you know, most cases of diabetes. If you're working with someone who has, you know, who, who is diabetic, you know, how, what does that look like? How often do you see them? What are you working with them on? You know, what, what, what can someone expect? Right. Well, typically, um, in my experience, I've been in practice for 23 years. I think the optimal uh, interval of follow up is about every four months. OK. Um, there should be blood work associated with that. Uh, typically something called an A1C which is a three month blood sugar average uh, in a single test, um, blood pressure monitoring, uh, cholesterol monitoring. Typically, if someone is well controlled, I do it about every other visit, so about every eight months. Um, you should have a diabetic foot exam at least once a year. You should see a, a uh, eye doctor at least once a year for a diabetic eye exam, because again, diabetes is one of the leading causes of blindness. Um, mm -hmm. You should have a flu shot every year. And then there are other uh, vaccinations, typically the pneumonia vaccine, which isn't due every year. Um, it is on a scheduled uh, basis, but that's sort of individualized. But some, someone with diabetes should have at least one pneumonia vaccine uh, and then periodically thereafter, depending on, on their age and circumstances. Mm -hmm. OK, so it's really important that they have that close relationship with it, with a doctor to be working, working through it no matter no matter what. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, we're in the midst, we're still in the midst of, you know, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some people might be nervous still about coming into the office. You know, there's a lots of great things that exist today to sort of monitor diabetes remotely. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, certainly if your diabetes needs to be better controlled um, or you're on multiple doses of, in, of insulin or other medications that can lower the blood sugar, you can periodically check your sugar with a home finger stick or glucometer. Mm -hmm. um, some places even uh, have a home A1C machine, but I haven't really seen that out that much, but definitely a home glucometer um, if it's directed by your physician to do that. Some people are able to control their sugars with diet alone. Um, and depending on what your routine is medically, uh, will determine whether and how often you need to check your blood sugars at home. One other thing I would uh, point out are that diabetes in a lot of ways is like mm -hmm. cancer. Um, you can ignore it, but it won't ignore you. So you really need to get your sugars under control to try and prevent the chronic complications of diabetes. No one wants to go blind or have early heart disease or kidney failure and be hooked up to dialysis or have nerve pain. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing I would use as a caveat is um, some people 
have used the term borderline diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really an inappropriate term. It's, it's kind of a garbage term. Borderline diabetes is the equivalent of being a little pregnant. Uh, <laughs> you can't just be a little pregnant, right? <laughs> Whether you're diabetic or you're not, there's something called pre-diabetes where your blood sugars are, are elevated, but not to the point where it crosses over the, the limit into the diabetic range. So the mm -hmm. A1C, which is a three-month average, is under 6.4%, and the blood sugar fasting is under 125. Um, so mm -hmm. there is that there is a pre-diabetes, but I never use the term borderline because it's a garbage term. And people file that away, and they don't think they have diabetes. And I've even seen patients whose blood sugars and A1C are clearly in the diabetic range, but they're told that they were, quote, borderline because they're not on medication. So I never use the term borderline diabetes. You are or you're not, or you could be pre-diabetic, but, but I never use the term borderline. What, what are those levels for, you know, what, what, when someone would be considered diabetic? So for diabetes, a fasting blood sugar of 126 or higher, or, okay. or the hemoglobin A1C of 6.5% or higher. Okay. Now, the difference between the fasting blood sugar and the hemoglobin A1C are when you get a fasting blood sugar, the reading will come back at, say, 120. What mm -hmm. that tells you is that, that at that instant in time, your blood sugar was 120. An hour from then, it could have been 200 or it could have been 100. You wouldn't know the difference. Patients mm -hmm. with diabetes don't typically get symptoms until their blood sugar, uh, if they have been diagnosed, if their blood sugar um, is under 300, they don't have symptoms. The reason people get symptoms when their blood sugar goes over 300 is that's the level at which your kidney can't reabsorb sugar anymore. Mm -hmm. So it starts spilling sugar in the urine that pulls water with it, which gives you the frequent urination and okay. also gives you the thirst. So you start drinking a lot more. Um, also, at a blood sugar of 300 or higher, the cornea in the eye starts to swell, and that can give people blurry vision. Mm -hmm. um, the way the hemoglobin A1C works is that your um, Red blood cells last about three months, and then they get broken down and recycled to make new red blood cells. In addition to carrying oxygen, the hemoglobin molecule is also sticky for sugar. So we can measure the percentage of sugar. This is a three-month single test. A1C of 6.5 or higher is in the diabetic range. And the higher that number goes, the more likely you're going to develop complications of diabetes. So the higher it is and the longer it's high, the more damage. Yeah. So the goal is to get that A1C to continue to go down over time. Yeah. So, so, you know, we're, we're wrapping up on our time here um, with together. So, you know, I mean, a lot of, we talked a lot about the complications and, you know, what are some of the th key things if we're talking diet, what are some of the key things, you know, three simple takeaways for what, you know, what you want people to know of things that they should think about with their diet if they're pre-diabetic or diabetic? So can you repeat that again, Dr. Goldman? I'm so sorry. We keep, we, we keep having some technical difficulties and I really apologize. That's all right. So the first thing is for any new diagnosis of diabetes or someone with uncontrolled diabetes, I, I always refer them to a dietitian to go through some of these diet issues in detail. I'm just, I'm going to repeat that because I, I heard you, but I'm not sure if everyone else did. So one is you refer out to a dietitian and talk to about, about diet, correct? Right, in detail. Okay. Secondly, you want to watch your carbohydrate intake. So things like pastas, breads, mm. potatoes, uh, refined sugars are certainly a no-no. Um, mm. Eliminate things that are um, easy to get rid of. So sugary sodas, juices. There's a lot of sugar in Mm -hmm. So I understand. Um, also, if you're going to have carbohydrates, uh, make sure that they are not refined. So if you're going to have bread, have wheat bread. If you're going to have rice, mm -hmm. have brown rice. Or so, 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 so less refined, less refined carbohydrates. Correct. So um, those are the main things. And obviously, if you're going to have things like sweets, candies, cakes, it really needs to be in a very Oops. I think we lost Dr. Goldman there for a second. I'm going to have you repeat that last that last piece again. So uh, the last thing are things like legumes or and sweets. So if you do have those, it has to be in very limited quantities and not very often. But I often refer people to a dietitian to talk about, you know, how they incorporate that into their diet. But it really needs to be limited because remember, you know, sweets, cakes, cookies have a lot of sugar in them. Yeah. So just I, we're, we're, we're having some a little bit of technical difficulties with our audio. So I think we'll 
we're going to wrap up. But any, you know, what's the last piece of advice you would love to to share with folks as as they think about you know better managing their their diabetes? First is that diabetes can happen even in type two, which is what's considered the adult onset, is associated with obesity. Even kids can get that. So the earlier you start healthy habits, the better you're going to do long term to prevent the development of diabetes or at least stave it off for for a long time. So healthy diet, more fruits, vegetables, lean meats, fish, chicken. Um, and exercise, keeping the weight off, uh, exercise itself, you know, helps to improve insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So watch your weight, exercise and periodically, you know, get checked by your primary care doctor to screen for diabetes. Yes. Thank you. So just, I mean, again, I know there were some sort of some challenges there in the beginning, but I think really the key is healthy habits, good exactly. diet, good exercise, start, start as early as possible to start working those habits into your life. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Goldman. We really appreciate it. Hope everyone enjoyed the information that, that you shared. And I know I certainly learned some new tips there. Um, again, just want to remind everyone, you can get more information on our website um, that's scrolling at the bottom of the screen or by calling our 800 number for, for any questions. Again, if you have New Jersey State Health Benefits, you can join our health at any time and, and, no, and, and at no cost. Dr. R, um, Dr. Goldman's practice is located in, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, if you're interested in learning more about Dr. Goldman. So thank you so much for joining us today and have a wonderful afternoon.